the European Space Agency's JUICE probe will crash into Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon. In 10 years, a $1 billion vehicle will instantly turn into a pile of trash. Moreover, scientists have known about this since 2012. And what's even stranger is that the doomed probe will leave Earth only in the summer of 2022. But why aren't scientists trying to prevent this catastrophe? In fact, this sacrifice is necessary to collect essential data, as it's somewhere around Jupiter that we hope to find life and maybe even establish colonies. But which moons of the gas giant should we choose for the research? In this video, you'll find out where's the place with the largest number of volcanoes in the solar system, why is it dangerous for space probes to get closer to Europa, and most importantly, can we survive on the moons of Jupiter? Could there be life on Io? Io is Jupiter's closest moon, and its diameter is 1,800 kilometers, which is only a bit larger than our moon. But despite its size, this moon is the most geologically active body in the solar system. The reason for this is Jupiter's strong gravity, which compresses Io with tidal effects. As a result, there are more than 400 active volcanoes on this moon, and their eruptions reach 300 meters in height. Due to such activity, volcanic ash and lava streams constantly reshape the surface, covering it in shades of yellow and green due to the high concentration of sulfur. Such conditions make life on Io impossible, and not only for extraterrestrial bacteria and animals, but also for human settlements. Besides, there might be underground caves on Io similar to lava tubes on Earth. They're formed due to the molten magma getting on evenly cooled and are somewhat similar to voids in a croissant. Some scientists suggest that they may have a bacterial life filling. It would be hard for people to settle there, as there are constant cave-ins due to io quakes. It's much more likely that we find other life and establish a colony on an extraterrestrial ocean on another known moon of Jupiter. How life-friendly is Europa? The diameter of Europa is 3,000 kilometers, which is like a quarter of the Earth's. But at the same time, heat from the tidal effects of Jupiter's gravity creates an ocean under the ice crust that is twice the amount of water from all of Earth's oceans combined. Because of the water layer, the surface is much calmer than the one on Io. Yes, there are volcanoes on Europa too, though it's not magma that comes out of them, but water. Ice showers in space. Really hot eruptions occur at the bottom of the ocean, and scientists believe that it's thanks to them that life might exist there. Bacteria, and perhaps even more complex organisms, could absorb heat from the depths of this moon, and maybe are just waiting for us to find them. And that's one of the tasks of the JUICE mission. The problem is that the probe will only be able to go around Europa twice. But why? The point is that Jupiter creates not only a gravitational field, but also a magnetic one. High-energy particles bombard the entire surface of Europa with ionizing radiation. Even a modern spacecraft won't be able to work for long under such conditions. The radiation background there is 5,400 millisieverts per day, which is enough to kill a person in less than a day. Of course, we can try to hide in the ocean under the ice while we're looking for life. But by the time the colonists might manage to drill 30 kilometers down through the ice crust, all of them will have inevitably turned into radioactive soup. So, for people to have a chance to survive, we need to find a place that's at least a little protected from radiation. How can Ganymede protect its inhabitants from radiation? It's the third moon of Jupiter, and although NASA, for example, is more interested in studying Europa, Ganymede is much more unique in many ways. Its diameter is 5,200 kilometers, which is about a quarter larger than Mercury. But the main thing for us is that Ganymede has its own magnetic field, which blocks the harmful radiation of Jupiter. That's why, to study this unique phenomenon, the European 
Space Agency is launching the JUICE mission. The probe will go around the moon 15 times and complete its mission by falling to its surface. That way, the probe will make its last measurements from extremely close range, which is impossible to do from Earth. Perhaps JUICE will even break through the ice crust of Ganymede, which has not just one ocean under it, as on Europa, but four. They're situated like layers of a layer cake, and scientists think that each of them could hypothetically have completely different forms of life. And the magnetic field indicates that there's a hot metal core capable of providing energy for the inhabitants of these four seas. It's just that, despite the magnetic field, the radiation background on the surface reaches 80 millisieverts per day. It's much less than on Europa, but even so, you'll get radiation sickness in 12 days, and if you don't get away immediately, you'll definitely be dead within a month. Unfortunately, even with modern technology, we just can't protect ourselves from such radiation. So apparently, we'll have to look for a place further away from destructive Jupiter. Will Callisto become our second home? It's 4,800 kilometers in diameter, which is only 1% smaller than Mercury. This moon is also much further away from Jupiter than the previous three. That's why it's not influenced by tidal forces. And there are no eruptions or Callisto quakes that could erase even meteorite craters, which in their turn provide tons of great places for hideouts. Besides, according to some data from satellites, at a depth of 150 meters, Callisto also has an ocean of liquid water that may contain life. This is beginning to look like a trend among Jupiter's moons. But most importantly, at such a distance from Jupiter, the radiation on the surface is only one-tenth of a millisievert per day, which means that people can safely stay there. That's why Callisto is now considered the third most suitable place for colonization after the Moon and Mars. In 2003, NASA suggested a program called HOPE for human exploration of the outer planets, and it was Callisto that was chosen as the main target of that mission. We don't even have to dig ourselves under the ice. We can place all the buildings we need right there on the surface. Imagine how much data we could collect if we put our equipment so close to Jupiter and extraterrestrial oceans. And if the program is approved, the first expeditions to Callisto won't leave until 2040. So it's your chance to get ready if you want to participate in colonization or in the search for extraterrestrial life. Anyway, let us know in the comments, would you like to fly to the moons of Jupiter? And what other places do you think we should colonize? Maybe the Antarctic? Or the Pacific Garbage Patch? Or perhaps the most deserted place of all? Detroit. <laughs>